as Einstein put it, it, he didn't believe that quantum mechanics could be true because it, it required that there be spooky action at a distance. That was his term. And what he meant is that when we have our ordinary sense of the way that the, the fabric of reality is, it seems like these two places are absolutely in space, they're separate, and, and the, never the twain shall meet. But in fact, it's not true. At some deeper level that we can't see with our eyes very clearly, two places in space are the same. They are, they are co-located, co-existing. So if we imagine that common sense, the way common sense literally meaning that the, what, what the, your senses tell you about the world, if that's the way the world is actually constructed, then things like psychic and mystical experience don't make any sense at all. Because the whole point about psychic and mystical experience that makes them strange is the sense that there's some kind of connection between what's going on inside your head and things elsewhere, elsewhere in space and in time. So what this view of quantum mechanics provides is a, a way of framing what these strange experiences are like. And it reframes it from somehow magically information is getting inside my head from signals or forces or something into a different view, which is that in a sense your head, yes, is here, but it's also spread out spread out through space and time. And so when, I, when I'm able to get a telepathic impression from somebody at a distance, it's not because I somehow jumped out there and got it, but because at some deep level, my head and the other person's head are co-located. We become entitled all the time when you communicate telepathically. Those experiences are so striking. I literally can read your thoughts if I become entangled with you. And such things happen. There are distant viewing experiments. There are even experiments now that you are seeing light flashes and your brain, brain potentials picks up the signature of those light flashes, what is called evoke potential, that can be measured in an EEG machine connected to your brain. And I am sitting over there, no light flashes, I cannot see you, and still my brain potentials, because I am correlated with you in terms of intention, I intend to be directly communicative with your experiences. That intention produces me, gives me the capability of simultaneously having the similar brain potential in my brain. It was first done by Jacobo Greenberg at the University of Mexico and now repeated by Peter Fenwick uh, in London. The day should be the sunrise. It should be the beginning of great thought. I wake up in the morning and I consciously create my day the way I want it to happen. Now sometimes, because my mind is examining all the things that I need to get done, it takes me a little bit to settle down and get to the point of where I'm actually intentionally creating my day. But here's the thing, when I create my day, and out of nowhere, little things happen that are so unexplainable, I know that they are the process or the result of my creation. And the more I do that, the more I build a neural net in my brain that I accept that that's possible. It gives me the power and the incentive to do it the next day. And we all create our own realities. And we do that because we are the observer. We are each the own observer of our own reality. And each of our individual consciousnesses creates our own individual reality in the most amazing way. My son, Evan, the physicist, says, you know, it's an additive thing. I mean, if I'm holding one reality and someone else is holding another reality, I mean, it's the Super Bowl this afternoon, and the reality that the Eagles are holding is a different reality than what the Patriots are holding. And only one of those realities are going to be the real reality. So there's some additive and there are interference patterns. Well, I think if we keep quantum physics and the understanding very simple for the layperson, that our observation has a direct effect on our world. I think if we keep it very simple, then people can get about the business of beginning to practice the skill of observation. See, the subatomic world responds to our observation, but the average person loses their attention span every six to ten seconds per minute. So that doesn't leave a lot of room for our attention span. So how can the very large respond to someone who doesn't have the ability to even focus and concentrate? Maybe we're just poor observers. Maybe we haven't mastered the skill of observation, and maybe it is a skill. 
And maybe we're so addicted to the external world and so addicted to the stimulus and response of the external world that the brain is beginning to work out of response instead of out of creation. If we're given the proper knowledge and the proper understanding and given the proper instruction, we should begin to see measurable feedback in our life. If you make the effort to sit down and design a new life and you make it the most important thing, and you spend time every day feeding it like a gardener feeds a seed, you will produce fruit. We are running the holodeck. We we are collectively, it's there, it's, it, has, it has such flexibility that anything you can imagine, it will create. And you learn, I mean, your intention causes this thing to materialize once you're conscious enough. Yes, so what is consciousness? What is consciousness? Well, consciousness is a very difficult thing to define. What is consciousness? Where does it come from? People have been trying to explain consciousness and try to figure out what exactly it is what it means for us as human beings, why we even have it. Uh, on a more, on a simple, uh, simple way of defining it is it has to do with awareness, and in particular it has to do with awareness of the self. That's at least how we as human beings have self-consciousness, so that when we look in a mirror we recognize that it's ourselves that we're looking at and not some other person or some other animal. And do you think science will understand that better than having to handle a hot potato called consciousness that has so much cultish religion backwater voodoo attached to it consciousness has been left out of the equations of physics in general as well as quantum physics for a very simple reason it's easier to do things that way assignment if you'd see it that way what to see i do they did oh god amanda i mean y you live in your past I and mean, everything with you is about what happened you hate churches you hate weddings you hate guys consciousness we have great trouble defining it to me consciousness is a byproduct of spirit entering de dense matter but we have a long long way to grow before we get to the stage where it is meaningful for us to ask the question, will we know God? Most people think of God as that great figure in the sky with the white beard who's scrutinizing the human race from above. They see us here on earth as in some form of neutral testing ground where we're placed by God for a period and God watches from above registering the scores on his laptop as to whether we perform according to his designs or whether we're offending him as, as it's put. An absolutely out, outrageous idea. How could we offend God, the type of God that people believe in? How could it matter so much to him? How could it above all matter that he would find it so serious a situation that he could condemn us to an eternity of suffering? These are bizarre ideas, but obviously they have a great hold on the fears and the limitations and the insecurities of people, which is why religion can play so effectively, whether deliberately or otherwise, on those insecurities. People fall into line very readily when they're threatened by these cosmic sentences of everlasting punishment. How in the Ten Commandments could we have possibly created a mind that could transcend space and time. No, we're too busy keeping our emotions in check to ever dream of infinite possibilities. And maybe that is the ultimate conspiracy. Even though a given person may have long ago thrown off the trappings of religion, they still live in the religious mold and they don't even know it but their whole conception of how reality works is all something that has been molded by religion. So until you get that out of your system, you can't ever make a go 
of uh, an evolutionary perspective.